Okay. I mean, I, let's let's move right into the question that we could spend the entirety of our time answering, but I'm sure we'll have little offshoots. And it's, how did this book come to be? This book is actually probably three different books. It, wow. I, well, I remember the first minute, and I actually have a little card when I wrote down the, the idea. My son has a lot of medical issues, and we were in a doctor's office. And the doctor was just offhandedly, I guess, with the effect of Philip time, he was telling me about an OB friend of his who had done a really great job delivering a baby that was in crisis. The, the, um, the mom was bleeding out and he just did a great job. He had to uh, give her a hysterectomy. And somehow, because the woman was young, she sued him for loss of fertility. The baby and the mom are fine. Oh. And she won. Wow. Yeah. So that made me kind of go, hmm. and then what if the guy was Asian and they would use all these tropes of like the Asian butcher, or like no regard for life. And it kind of married with this idea of Middle March is one of my favorite books. And yes. So I've always wanted to write a book that was, you know, not only about small village life and its minutia, but also about the doctor who tries to do the right thing. And, you know, as you know, Middle March, he accidentally kills Raffles even after everyone's trying to assassinate him. You know, the doctor tries to do the right thing and then just ends up not doing it. And so that was kind of like the moral question that I started with. You know, I ended up like haunting the courthouse in Providence where I lived, and just waiting, you know, befriending the clerk. So he'd tell me when there was a medical malpractice case. You know, I spent a whole year watching a case. Jungmann's pieces were more um, just filler. Einstein, who's Jungmann's son in the novel, mm. was more the person who was big hotshot, doctor, went to Harvard. And so that novel i wrote a whole novel about poor einstein and his medical malpractice case and then i was like this is the book that i wanted (laughs) you know even though it was you know it had a beginning and middle and end so i started over again slowly as i was doing it young man's story started taking over more and more of it even though he was more the like honestly the filler like i have to get to this next part so here's another Jungmann story. And then, you know, the the other iteration was in 2016. So it was much more of a kind of satire about medical, you know, hijinks and capital, late stage capitalism. You know, it was a big social novel. And that, but then after 2016, I just felt like satire just kind of went out the window in terms of yeah. you know, the excess you need. And then at the same time, um, Social media is so wonderful in, so I am, I am from a really small town in Minnesota as well. Mm -hmm. And my father's not an obstetrician, but he was a long time anesthesiologist um, in our town. And so that means he's probably treated like every single person in our town, you know, births, tests, chance accidents. And someone in our town posted, this is when Trump was very much at you. We have to nuke North Korea and stuff. And even little kids are just talking about like killing North Koreans and stuff. And someone had posted a, their bumper sticker very proudly that said 150 species of animal go extinct every day and that North Korean should be next. Holy shit. Right? So yeah. I just thought, you know, you don't understand this person who saved your life is North Korean. And then also my, my parents also, when they first came to this country in the 50s, um, they were undocumented for a period. So, you know, it, it sounds corny, but I really ended up shifting gears with this because, mm-hmm. I, you know, I kind of, you know, as a novelist, I kind of feel like, oh, I want to write this big social novel. I have this idea of what I want to do. But then the novel found its own form. And a lot of it, it sounds simplistic, but a lot of it became, I would like to show people that North Koreans are also human. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not too low a bar <laughs> to some degree, if you know what I mean. You know what I mean? Yeah. It became so urgent. And now, you know, we're seeing even, you know, like a couple of weeks ago, there's so much anti-Asian violence going on. Yeah. That I do feel that was the correct decision for what I wanted to do artistically and otherwise, even though that, was, that wasn't really, you know what I mean? I kind of felt like, oh, I want yeah. to do this cool thing with startup bro tech culture you know, late stage capitalism. I mean, it still has many of those elements, but the book that is more, is more rounded. And I have to say it was actually when my agent sold it, it was 850 pages. Whoa. Yeah. I really had this David Foster Wallace thing going on. (laughs) No doubt. (laughs) But but why not? (laughs) Why not? Right. Yeah. So. 
You know, I spent a lot of time thinking about who gets to be David Foster Wallace. Right. You know? So like, why, why not go for the gold? 